Hello, this is Brother Cromer from the Math Department at BYU-Idaho, and I'll be covering Lesson 3, which is dealing with describing quantitative data, primarily dealing with shape, center, and spread. So first of all, I'll be talking about the shape of quantitative distributions, followed up by center of quantitative distributions, and then I'll be dealing with spread and variability of quantitative distributions. So first of all, to describe shapes, we use in statistics histograms. They're constructed by drawing rectangles for each class of data. The height of each rectangle is the frequency of the class, and the width of the rectangle is the same as the rectangles that touch each other. So we want to have these rectangles touch each other so we can see the shape of this distribution. Now here's an example of a histogram that was created by SPSS, and you can get a similar result using Excel. And we can see here that uh, this helps us with this histogram describe the shape of this distribution, which we'll talk about in just a minute here. Okay, so now here are the three different types of distributions. Okay, the first one on the left side is what's called a left skew distribution. If it's because the tail is on the right side, the bulk, the bulk of the data is on the left, but the tail, the, the tail describes the type of skewness. So this here is a right skew distribution. This here in the center is what's called a symmetrical, and this example is specifically a bell shaped distribution. And over here to the left is a left skew distribution. Okay, so then. Here are other types of distributions. Here's a symmetrical distribution that's uniform. Basically, it's about, for each bin, it's about the same height. And so this is an example of a uniform distribution. We also have something that's symmetrical that's also bimodal. Here's where if we have two, here's the, an example where there, there's the, the hump, if you will, the highest point is at two different spots here. And so the one here on the left is, is, one, is the one high point, and this over here to the right is also a high point. So this is an example of a bimodal distribution. You can argue is also symmetrical. Okay. So now let's talk about measures of center, the second item here. We first talked about measures, or measures of uh, shape, or is, which is left skewed, right skewed, or symmetrical, and you use a histogram. Now we're going to talk about measures of center. Now with center, there's three different measures of center that we'll cover in this class in statistics. One is the mean which is the value computing the sum of all the values of a variable of a data set and divided by the number of observations. The second one is the median, and that's the value that lies in the middle of the data when arranged in the setting order. So half the data are below the median, half are above the median. And then how we calculate the median is that we arrange the data in ascending order, and then we determine the number of observations, which, uh, which is n. And if n is odd, then the median of the observation it lies in the n plus 1 divided by 2 position, or the center position. When you put sort in ascending order, it's just smack in the middle. If n is even, then the median is the mean of the middle two observations. So we just take those two middle observations and we average those to get the median. The mode, which I'll, I will just touch lightly, is the most frequent observation that occurs. It's not used as much as the mean of the median. Now, example of it, here's, the, here's my children's ages here. Here's Emma, who's 13, John, who's 15, Nathan, 17, M, Bonnie, 19, and Blake, 21. First of all, the mean is just is summing up all of these numbers and dividing it by 5. And so when you do that, the average is going, or the mean, is going to be 17. The median, you sort the data in ascending order. Now, since we have, since we have uh, an odd number of observations, we just take the middle number, which is 17. Now, what if I, just supposing, Sister Cromer and I had an October surprise, and we have a child who is 12 years younger, and uh, came the surprise of all surprises. First of all, what would be the mean in this case? So the mean would be summing up all of these six ages and dividing it by six in this this case to get to get the mean. Now the median is a little bit different because now what we do is we take we take the two middle numbers and we average those to get the median. Now the mode is the is the most frequent observation. So since there's no uh, observation that went beyond or a value that went beyond one, we have no mode. We there's no I don't have twins, so therefore there is no mode in this example here. Okay, so now let's talk about now here's another example. We can we can get the mean, median, and mode using SPSS. And so here's an example of where you can get. I, I don't have the mode here, but the, this is an example of SPSS data set. This is heart rate data, where the average heart rate per minute, or heartbeats per minute, is 78.65. With an example of data that I've gotten from a previous semester, with the median being 76. So you can grab that either from an SPSS or an Excel. Uh, output. Um, either one would work just fine. 
Okay, so now, uh, so now the last thing I want to mention here with shapes and centers, now we're going to combine the two together, is that if we have a right skewed distribution, the mean is going to be higher than the median. The reason for that is, is that um, the median is resistant to outliers, however, the mean is not. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so if we have so if we have a right skew distribution here, that mean is going to be pulled over to the right. Now, uh, conversely, with the left skew distribution, since we have outliers over here, the mean is going to get pulled to the left, so the mean is going to be smaller or less than the median. Now, if we have a symmetrical distribution, it's going to be about, it's, it's going to be about the mean and the median are going to be about the same. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is show you an example here. I'm going to go to my SPSS output. You can see something similar in... In, in, um, in Excel. Now here's an example of a right skew distribution. Now looking at this, what do you think is going to be higher between uh, the two, the mean or the median? Well in this case, the higher of the two is going to be the mean because the outliers are over here on the right side, the tails on the right. And so if we look at the mean versus the median, the median, the mean here just confirms it here, the mean is 63.58 and the median is 60. So that confirms that the mean is higher than the median. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is, is now we've co we've covered a shape and center of data. Now I want to wrap it up with the spread of data. So say for instance, here's an example of a right skewed distribution. This is the credit data where the mean is 63. Point. This is from another data set that that I've worked with as well, where the mean is 63.12 and the median is 56. So this exa this example is skewed right. Over here, the heart rate, here's another example of heart rate data where the mean is 72.45 and the median is 72. This here is an example where it is bell shaped, where it's bell shaped, maybe slightly right skewed. So how do you measure spread? Now how we measure spread primarily is using which is called um, the variance, but even more specifically, we're going to talk about the standard deviation. Okay. Now here are the formulas for dealing with the variance and the standard deviation. What I'd like to do instead is use an example of the ages of my kids again. And so what I'd like to do is I'm going to pull up, here's the example of the ages of my kids. My, the ages are, these are the ages again, the five ages. And so you can, you can follow along here. That's also the example of it is also in the online textbook. But the first step is to get the mean of the ages of the kids. And so we calculated this earlier that the mean is 17. Okay. Now the next step is we want to get from all of these observations, we want to get the deviations from, uh, from the mean. So we take 13 minus 17, we get negative 4. Then we take the next one, the age of John, 15 minus 17, that's minus 2. 17 minus 17 is 0. 19 minus 17 is 2. And 21 minus 17 is 4. I should get rid of these negatives here. Okay. So this is the deviations from the mean. That's the, that's the second step after calculating the mean. We want to get the deviations from each of these observations from the mean. And then we square these deviations. So we take negative 4 squared, which is 16, negative 2 squared, which is 4, 0 squared, which is 0, 2 squared, which is 4, and 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, that's step number three is getting the square deviations from the mean. Then step number four is to sum these squared deviations. So if we sum 16 plus 4 plus 0 plus 4 plus 16, we will get 40. And then the next step after that, after we get the sum of these squared deviations, is that we take the sum divided by the num n minus 1, n being the, the sample size. In this case, the sample size is 5. So 5 minus 1, which is 4, so we take 40 minus, divided by 4, and we get 10, and that would be our variance. To get the standard deviation, we just take the square root of 40. Uh, excuse me, we take the square root of 10 to get our standard deviation, which is 3.16 and anything after that. And so, so I'll stop right here and I'll continue with spread of data in the next video.